Hey guys, how's it going today? Uh, what I want to show you in this tutorial is how to bring in gloss and reflection maps. Uh, I'll also show you how to bring in opacity maps. Um, I'm going to get into a bit more in the tutorial, but what you kind of need to know now is that Lumion typically only lets you bring in the color map, the normal map, and the height map. That's what they have the slots for anyways. But if you have a photo editor like Photoshop, or I believe it's another one called GIMP, then what you can do is you can actually drop gloss maps uh, into the alpha channel of the normal map and you can also drop uh, reflection or opacity maps into the, the color map. Uh, the reason why you can do this is Lumion has 32 bits uh, worth of channels um, and that means that there is the red, the blue, the green, but then there's also the alpha map. Uh, typically if you're just using a normal JPEG that can only go up to the 24 uh, bits so a lot of people I uh, don't know about that. And to get the alpha, you need to use Targa. So I'm going to show you guys how to do that. Um, the materials that I'm going to be using in this tutorial, uh, I just got off of Polygon. Um, the Chainmail Copper Rounded Thin is free, and we'll be uh, using this one for the opacity. So in Lumion, we're going to be able to make it so all the um, all of the black background there is going to be gone, and we'll just have almost like a chain link fence effect. And for this one, uh, just type in forest and then this is just kind of a standard um, ground uh, texture. I'll also put the links in the description of the video so everyone can follow along um, but you can really do this for uh, any texture that you want. So first things first uh, I'm gonna be using SketchUp just to make a plane. Uh, you can use any modeling software it doesn't matter all you need to be able to do is make a flat plane. I'm going to make it 10 by 10 and then duplicate it. But you just need to have uh, two different material IDs for Lumion. So we'll do 10 by 10. Grab this here. Drag it over. And then I'm just going to use the Lumion live link. Oh, got to save that. So desktop grass. And then hit the live link, it should open up. Um, I'm using Lumion 10.3 right now. I don't think that actually matters. Uh, I believe that the 32-bit channels uh, has been a thing since Lumion came out. So whether you are using an older version than 10.3 or you're watching this in the future, uh, I think that this should still have all the same effects. Maybe they will move around the menu, but all of the, uh, the function should still be in here uh, no matter what. So... I'm going to drag this up a little bit just so we can get a better effect. So I'll drag it up five feet. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what the texture that I have of the, the chain mail looks like uh, without the opacity map. So this is kind of the standard way that someone would do it in Lumion. So we'll just drag this stuff in. a little height map on there just to kind of show that so most people would kind of get to here and go like oh I guess that's all you can do like you know you can displace that but that's it's not really it's not good because uh, that's not how the material is supposed to look so we're going to open up the folder and we'll open up Photoshop And what th we're only going to need five maps to make the completed material for this. We're going to need the color map, so we'll drag this in. And then we're also going to drag the mask here. So if we click on this and look at it, uh, it's a pretty, pretty standard. And what this is going to, what this is going to do is all of the white is going to remain. We're going to be able to see that texture, but all of the black is going to be uh, removed from the background. So. Effectively, it'll make a chain link fence, um, like be see through. So, you're gonna drag it. You want to drag it over here because if you drag it here, it will get just dropped on top of these. And I find it easier to do this where it gets its own. You're going to hit Control A, and when you see the selection around this, that's good. That's what you want it to do. Then I hit Control X. We're gonna pick it up. We're gonna go back to this, and now we can see the channels. So red green blue those are the 24 and now we're going to add the 32 bit you see alpha one all you have to do after you make the channel control v and now that's in now before we hit 
uh, the RGB back on, what we want this to turn to is almost red because that is, I guess, just the way that Photoshop shows the alpha channel. Uh, and so you're going to see the normal texture with almost like a red coat of paint over it. And then there you go. So what we have now is the red channel, the green channel, the blue channel, but we also have that extra alpha. And that's going to let us uh, do some pretty cool stuff. This is also a very important part. Uh, if you save it as a JPEG or a PNG, uh, I don't think it's going to work. Um, what you want to save it as is Targa, and I'll show you why. Uh, so yeah, we have our uh, chainmail copper rounded. Go in metalness. Here we are. And I just name it, you know, call mask. It doesn't matter. But we do need to have it as a Targa. This is very important. Targa. So we save it, and then this is why. So if we do 16 bits, it's not gonna. It's only gonna take two of the three. If we do 24 bits, it's only gonna take the red, green, the blue. But the 32 is gonna let us have all of the channels. Uh, I believe that you can actually add more channels in, but that's kind of rare. Uh, at least it definitely is with Lumion because it doesn't uh, doesn't do anything. So we'll hit OK, and then we have it saved in our folder. I just close these out because we already have our uh, our texture. Now the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to bring in this. Uh, typically you're gonna get two normal maps. One is a TIFF. Uh, for this just use the JPEG. Um, I found that it kind of messed up the Targa and I wasn't getting the effect that I wanted when I tested this. So just bring in the normal um, and that's fine. And then we're also gonna bring in the roughness map. The thing is though is as I mentioned it's a gloss map you want to bring in. Roughness and gloss are the same thing. They're just inverted. So when you bring it in, you're going to see that it's mostly white with the uh, kind of like black chain design. All you're going to do is hit control I and then that inverts it. And now you have the black background. And then that's just telling it that the the background is not glossy at all, which there won't be anything there. But then uh, the chains is going to have like a shimmer to it. And that's what we want. So again, we hit control A it means select all control X, which means to cut. We go back to this. We add the alpha. Control V, and then you're going to see that red effect again. So now we go to Save As, Targa. And I just named this Norm Gloss. Great, 32 bits. And okay, so now we have that. We'll go back into Lumion, and I can show you guys the difference that that makes. Sorry if my uh, keyboard is very loud. I never actually thought about it till now, but that's probably annoying some people. Uh, oh, we got to change this to image file. So we want the norm gloss again. Um, and he here, right here, um, for the color map, uh, it says color map alpha clips the object, which means that that what we're telling Lumion is that in the alpha channel of the color, we put an opacity map. Uh, later in the tutorial, we'll see when we do it with reflection, and you can do it with emissive, but uh, I've never really found a reason to use it for that because I find that if you want to bring something emissive into Lumion, it's better just to make it its own material and then adjust the settings uh, like that. So, uh, come in here, make it displace. It does look a little messier than it actually should be, too. Uh, when you render it out, you kind of get those those edges those, that goes away. Um, so let's just put a quick style on this right there. And I will call it, we'll just say render here. We'll do a little test. So uh, this has some depth of field on it, which I'm going to remove for the next picture. But as you can see, the edges kind of get cleaned up with that. And then just like that, you can have a chain link fence pretty easily. So if you ever have to model that in, you know, SketchUp or Blender or something like that, all you really have to do is make the poles, make a flat face on it, and then put this effect on it, and you can give it some some width. It's a lot easier than actually going and modeling every single link. Uh, unless you have a add-on to do that, that could be pretty tedious in a lot of the softwares. So, yeah, that's a pretty good start there. Uh, so what I will do right now is I'll remove these, and we will go to the next object or texture rather. Okay, so the one I want to show with this one is how to do the uh, reflectivity map. So uh, first uh, I'll do the testing one. Um, 
if you ever open it and there's nothing here like this this kind of messes me a couple times just go down to sort of the filter and just make sure texture files are selected so you can see everything uh, and for this I kind of prefer to use the color map as opposed to the albedo they're the same thing except the color map has some uh, built-in shadows albedo is the color map with no shadow in it so you're going to get very similar outcomes uh, but for lumion I, I just find that color has like a little bit more definition although it's not uh, it's not that important so yeah we will go bring just the regular normal map in. We'll also put a little displacement on it. So right off the bat, what you can kind of see is that things came in and you are getting some effect on the lighting. Uh, you know, it's not like a flat surface. You are seeing the normal map, but it's still not perfect because it almost looks like there's like a layer of this, like epoxy on it. And that's not what we want. Uh, you could mess around with the sliders, but what you're going to find with this is the the gloss map is if you bring it down to zero there's no gloss on it whereas if we're able to actually bring it in using the gloss and normal targa then certain areas will get more glossy than the others because lumion actually has that information so what we're going to do is we're going to open photoshop back up and i'm going to close these uh, then i'm going to bring in the color map I'm going to bring in the reflection map this time. Uh, and so that should, this one should just look like a, a darker version of it. We're going to hit control A, control X, go back to this, make that alpha channel. And then see how we have that red effect again. Uh, so for this one, yeah, just save it right here. We'll do ref. Great. 32 bits. Um, then we can close that out because we have what we need. So we'll bring in the normal map this time. And the gloss has to go into the normal map. That is, uh, I made that mistake before. I didn't think that it mattered, but you won't get the right effects. It has to be this way. Uh, and so this one, we won't have to invert because it's the gloss map. Uh, I'll show you again. So if you have a roughness map, you just hit control I. Now our gloss map is a roughness map. And if we want to go back to gloss, we just hit control I again, it just inverts all the colors. So control A, control X, uh, make the alpha channel, control V. And then we, again, when you see this red sort of uh, layer go over it, that's when you know it's the correct, um, how you did things correctly because that's uh, Photoshop basically saying that there's an alpha channel on top of uh, the three color channels that you had. So again, we're gonna go to save as, uh, Targa. I just call it norm gloss, doesn't really matter. Uh, yeah, and so then we can come in here and color reflection. Now, when you first bring it in, yeah, it's going to make it invisible. Uh, if we rendered this out right now, there would be nothing there because as I showed you before, there's three different things that you can do. You can make it so that the color map masks reflectivity with its alpha. The color map uh, will use an opacity map so that it makes the areas that are black see-through and in this case it's just making the whole thing see-through and then the emissive map which i wouldn't worry about so we're going to hit mass reflectivity and then right off the bat you can see the difference that that makes uh, you're not getting all this shimmering because even though the gloss is set um, in here it's it has the information that it needs but let's bring in the other map so we get even more of a look so yeah now you can see some of that definition coming in and I just think that it's, um, you know, you could sit around and mess around with all of the different uh, dials, but I just think that it's better to kind of do it in ex uh, external softwares like we're doing right now. Uh, and then let's just add a little, little displacement map on there. Then that'd be perfect. And just make it like that. Okay, so right, now we can see that you can definitely see the difference when you start doing this. Let me get rid of the field of the field. Uh, yeah, so you can see the difference that that makes. Um, I think it's pretty much night and day with this one. Uh, I'm going to do one more texture really fast just because um, I think it better shows how it works. Um, I just couldn't really find a good example with the 
uh, free materials. And I didn't want to, you know, kind of go off and do some, uh, do some stuff that you guys wouldn't have the ability to do. So I just thought I'd come and add this last part in as a bonus. So I'm going to remove all these maps again. And we have maybe this one. So I got this off of uh, substance. Uh, so this is the material right here. So as you can see in the substance uh, player, uh, this is where you can kind of adjust everything here. But you can see that there is uh, one area, which is the dirt, and there's no reflectivity. I even turn the roughness up. Um, but then you also have the water that is very reflective. And that's why I think that this is just a really good example because you can kind of see how uh, the two different methods of doing it work. So we have muddy steps, normal. And it, it doesn't necessarily look bad. Like it's, you know, for a lot of... Uh, a lot of jobs you don't really have to worry too much about it like it'll be passable but if you really want to learn um, you just want to learn this stuff for the future so if you ever have to you know get really close up on this stuff then it's no problem and again you know you can come in here and you can make it so that either the like everything is reflective as it should be um, or sorry everything is re like kind of reflective as a unit if you turn it down there's no you know everything's completely rough but now I'm going to show you what happens when we do it with this. Uh, I'm going to open up Photoshop again. And Muddy Steps. Base color. Specular. Uh, cut this out. Oh, oops. I'm going to save this one as Call ref. And okay, that one's good. Now I'm going to bring in the normal map and the glossiness. Great. Alpha, bang. And once you get kind of the hang of it, it can go very quick. At first, it kind of, you know, took me a couple of minutes basically to do each one because I kept making mistakes. But, you know, you can pretty much do this in like 20 seconds. And it, you'll save more time doing it like this than just fiddling with all of the all of the little kind of dials in Lumion. So um, I also import just about every material that I use in Lumion um, just because I find that you can just get a much nicer scene. Uh, if you're doing something, especially interiors, where you need to get up close, I, I always use polygon or substance just because I find you have much more control over the materials. With the uh, polygon materials, or sorry, with the Lumion materials, some of them even just are from polygon. But um, the deal that I think that they actually had to get some of the materials from uh, other companies is that they weren't allowed to use a very high resolution. Uh, and so if you're able to go and find an actual polygon material that's also in Lumion as the polygon material, you're always going to get a better version if you download it from the internet. Like that's just uh, kind of how it works. So I I don't think I really ever use any uh, Lumion material. And that's why this is a very important trick uh, if you're in the same boat. So what was I saving this as? Uh, normal gloss. Okay. So we can close that down. We're all done with Photoshop for now. And we'll take this. And okay, it's already set on reflectivity, so that's good. Normal gloss. And you're going to see the difference right away. So I'll bring in the, uh, the height map just so there's a little more definition to it. Yeah, and I think that's a really good example. So right off the bat, you can see that on this side, um, the mud is kind of shimmering the way that it would in real life, where on the other side, it's just too reflective. Um, with muddy water like this, you wouldn't see the sky reflected. Uh, it would just obviously be, it's too muddy, and that's kind of the effect that you see on the side that we brought in the other materials. Uh, and so, yeah, you can just see the difference right there. I'm going to make a... Just make a couple of corrections here. I think that that's I think if we render this out, you'll see it. Yeah, so 
while the one on the left is passable, you can just see the difference in how the reflection is kind of, uh, well, muddied uh, on the surface of the water. Uh, on the left-hand side, you can actually see the clouds and the blue in the sky, but that shouldn't really be happening because the water is so dirty. Um, the mud also kind of works on the left, but you get more of this this wet look to it on the right. Um, and so that pretty much concludes the tutorial. If you guys have any questions or comments about the video, I'd love you to uh, post them below. Uh, we can have a little discussion about it. And... Um, you know, I'll be uh, I'll be hopefully releasing more videos soon. Just some Lumion tips that I've picked up over the last couple of years of learning the software. Um, I have learned pretty much how to bring in a bunch of stuff from Mega Scans, how to do uh, decals in here, and um, just kind of add a lot to the Lumion library from uh, external uh, sources. So, yeah, have a great night, guys, and uh, I'll see you in the next video.